People ask me, what's the big deal about entangled particles? Aren't they just the same? Well, it turns out, no, they're not just the same. Uh, quantum mechanics, every quantum mechanical system has some properties that are surprising because they're different from classical mechanics. Here's a list of them. And the one that's most important for the entangled particles and Bell's theorem is the non-locality, which is also called action at a distance. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. Now, when I first heard about this, I was surprised that other people consider it surprising because I grew up, what, what action at a distance means is that one object can exert a force on another object with no physical contact. Well, I grew up playing with magnets. Okay, here are some uh, safety pins and here's a magnet. As you can see, the magnet does not have to touch the safety pins to attract them. You just have to get it kind of in the range and they jump right up. You can also use one magnet to repel another magnet without touching it. Now, when I got to uh, elementary school, my teachers told me that the earth goes around the sun because of gravity, the gravity attracts it. None of them seemed to think this was any problem, that there was just empty space in between. So I didn't think it was a problem either. Then I got to college and my professor said, Newton thought his theory was a problem because he didn't understand, he couldn't explain how the sun could reach out and, and have an effect on the earth at, at such a distance with just empty space. Um, okay, and I'm curious whether Newton ever played with magnets. But anyway, the, uh, the solution to this problem was that it's not just empty space between the sun and the earth or between any two planets. There is a field, a gravitational field between them. And a field of any kind is kind of like um, a cell phone signal. You and I can be separated by a long distance and as long as we are both connected to the signal, we can interact with each other. Another way to think, picture a field, like the gravitational field, is like a line of dominoes. Now, each domino interacts with only its nearest neighbors. So it's just the local interaction. But if you have a long enough line, then you can send a signal as far as you want. You just have to have enough dominoes. Okay, well, when you have only local interactions like that, it takes time, some amount of time, for the signal to go from one end to the other end because you're only interacting locally. And Einstein told us that the maximum speed of any signal is the speed of light. So for example, if our sun could fall into a wormhole and disappear into a parallel universe somewhere, then it would take us eight and a half minutes to even notice that the sun's light was gone and also the sun's gravity was gone. So Einstein supposedly cleared up this problem of action at a distance and then quantum mechanics brought it right back. That's in the form of um, entangled particles. Here's an illustration of entangled particles. Suppose we have a source that sends a bunch of different pairs of particles to two different labs. We've had a lot of experiments done and it turns out the experiments that you do in one lab affects the outcomes of the experiments in the other lab, even though they're far enough away that there's no possibility of communicating at the speed of light or slower. Here's the part I consider pretty spooky. The photons or the electrons, whatever, apparently can communicate with each other but we can't use them to communicate with each other. Each lab that gets half of the entangled pairs of particles has just some kind of random sequence of, of, of results. It would be great if we could figure out how to communicate faster than light, but we haven't done it yet. And yet we see that something's happening that appears to violate Einstein's relativity. The key experiments with entangled particles uh, were done in 1982. The Nobel Prize was awarded for work on entangled particles in uh, 2022. 
Now, what Bell's theorem tells us is that um, the results that we get from correlating the uh, experiments on entangled particles show us that they're, they're doing something faster than the speed of light. So that appears to be a quantum mechanics appears to be in violation with Einstein's relativity. And the experiments agree with quantum mechanics, not with, with relativity. Now, when I first read the analysis of these experiments back in the 80s, I thought it was hard to understand, you know, the uh, how you analyze the data to show that there was this non-local correlation. So I came up with a story of a time machine that helped me understand what was going on. I'm going to share that with you in the next video. But meanwhile, um, as people have looked at this over the years, they found a lot of uh, a lot of other ways to explain it, and some of those may be better than what I have. I don't know. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, though, that could be confusing, is that sometimes you'll hear entangled particles are opposites and other times you'll hear they're the same. Well, there's a good reason for that. When John Bell wrote up his paper on entanglement, that was in 1964, uh, he said, he, he used the example of entangled electrons. So they'll have a spin up and a spin down. Those are opposites. But it's much easier to do the experiments, it turns out, with entangled photons, which have either which have the same polarization. They can be both vertical or both horizontal or any other angle. They just have to have the same polarization. So if you look at more videos or read more popular books about entanglements, just keep in mind there are two different ways to do the experiment with entangled particles. Entangled particles are very important in uh, quantum computing and in quantum information storage. So they have a lot of technical, uh, technological applications. They're also philosophically important because we want to know, well, how can we get around uh, Einstein's uh, relativity and the limit of traveling, of anything traveling faster than the speed of light? That's all I have for now. Thank you for watching.